Hey guys, so today I thought I might try something a little bit different. Now, as you can see presented in front of you is a Windows 7 pretty standard looking desktop and as is the case with pretty much all of my tutorial demonstration videos, it's running inside of a virtual machine. There are a few reasons why I tend to like to do this. Uh, the first being that most of my desktops on my operating systems don't look like the standard desktop and therefore can sometimes be a little bit difficult to follow. So having a nice standard default layout might uh, sort of make things a little easier to follow for most people. Also with a lot of cases, uh, when um, when I do my tutorial demonstration videos, it often involves installing and configuring software. And sometimes it's a little bit tricky to undo that and redo that on your sort of main operating system um, sort of easily without, you know, causing bugs and so forth as well. So, um, so today I thought I might uh, do a particularly interesting uh, tutorial showing you how to watch Twitch TV live streams through the VLC media player. And for those of you who are wondering, and I'm not sure how many of you there are out there because VLC media player is pretty widely known, VLC media player is an open source media player similar to Windows media player, but it plays a lot more different file types. It's also available on just about any operating system known to man. I've seen it work on Windows, I've seen it work on just about any Linux distribution I can think of, BSD, uh, Android, and I'm sure it works pretty damn well on the Macs as well. So, uh, basically one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this today is because there is a bit of a movement on the internet which is gathering momentum, uh, and that movement is to actually try and push Adobe Flash off the internet. Adobe Flash, for those of you that don't know, is the plugin that runs a lot of the uh, video applets and um, Flash game applets that you might see on websites like um, YouTube, Daily Motion, uh, Armor Games. And whereas many of these websites have um, HTML5 um, sort of substitutes, or, or a lot of these sites are actually moving across to HTML5 away from Flash, uh, most notably in YouTube. I know that Daily Motion does as well. Um, in fact, Pretty much, you know, 9 out of 10 of the video websites that I've seen actually uh, have an HTML5 based player if the Adobe Flash codec isn't available. HTML5, of course, is a lot more open. It's a lot more, uh, well, it's a lot less CPU and graphically intensive as well. But one of the major um, the video platforms to actually be behind on this is Twitch TV. Now, they are working on an HTML5 uh, compatible uh, video streaming service, but it's not here yet. So uh, you can though stream um, Twitch TV through VLC Media Player, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do just that. Now, what you're going to need uh, to begin with is uh, a Windows 7 operating system, and um, I'm going to be using uh, Internet Explorer because, like I say, it's a pretty default um, setup. I haven't installed anything anything at all yet pretty much. So um, I thought I might give it a go. I've got three websites here. This one I will come to later, but let's uh, hop over to Videolan uh, right now and actually get a copy of the player. So you can acquire the Videolan player just by going to videolan.org. I'll put all the relevant links down in the description and there's a big button that says download VLC for Windows 22 megabytes. That's a, that's a very small file size for a decent uh, media player. So um, there is a overwhelming um, performance boost that you, that you get from running Twitch TV live streams uh, through VLC. Um, and also because the, you know, the internet in my local area, being a rural area, isn't very good at all. You can actually get a much higher quality live stream through the Twitch TV service if you run it through VLC Media Player than if you run it through the website using Adobe Flash. So even if you're not um, in any way a fan of this anti-Adobe Flash movement or even sort of not aware of it at all or don't care, it's still worth at least learning uh, how easy it is to actually do this because, well, you might need a bit of a performance boost. I certainly know that Twitch TV buffers like crazy when uh, when I'm trying to run it. And it might be have something to do with my rural internet connection, but if I can improve the quality, well, I will. Okay, so let's, uh, let's run the installer, which will involve uh, downloading it. So it's all pretty straightforward to do. Uh, I'm probably going to skip out the bit where it is. Oh, we're going to run. Uh, so I'm going to probably jump ahead to actually where I've installed the VideoLAN um, player because it's uh, it's a pretty standard install process. Um, but again, even if you are not have no intention of actually using um, this method to actually watch Twitch TV live streams, I strongly recommend getting a copy of VideoLAN uh, yourself just because it can play more different file types than um, just about any other media player out there. It comes with a lot of codecs with it, which is fantastic. Okay, so the install is completed, so um, we can actually run it open for the first time. I'm only doing this to actually make sure that it's installed properly. Um, 
there's not really any reason to do it other than that. So I'm just going to also, you can certainly see the uh, performance hit as you get from running it inside of a virtual machine. But again, of course, I've got to keep uh, recording software running and all of that kind of stuff. So um, what is this movement, you might be asking, that's uh, getting people to actually try and uninstall uh, Adobe Flash from their operating systems completely in, in some of the more extreme cases? Well, Okay, so it's got a privacy policy. You can regularly check for updates, things like that. It's a great thing about open source software in general is that it's very open about what it does with the information that it stumbles across for you. Okay, so as you can see here, it works, you know, all pretty standard. But yeah, basically, there are um, a good number of security risks involved with uh, Adobe Flash, as well as tracking and stuff like that. So if you want to practice surfing the internet, trying to keep the security loopholes as tight as possible and protecting your online privacy, uh, then uninstalling Adobe Flash is uh, probably a step in the right direction. Adobe Flash can do a lot of things with the hardware that you probably aren't aware of, including things like manipulating your webcam and, uh, and microphones that are plugged into the USB. So uh, it certainly has seen its fair share of security vulnerabilities over the years. Obviously, it claims to patch every single one it finds, but again, we can only take Adobe's word for it. And of course, we don't know the undiscovered uh, security loopholes as well, at least with a more open internet like HTML5, these uh, security loopholes get resolved a lot quicker and reliably so. So anyway, on to the next stage. We have done nothing more at this stage than install VLC Media Player. The, you can do it with other ones, but VLC is, well, quite frankly, my preferred one. Okay, so uh, this is the overview of Livestreamer. So you can get this by going to livestreamer.readthedocs.org. Again, link in the description. And um, the install on this page... I think we have to go to installation. Now it is a command line interface, but don't let that scare you if you are afraid of the command line because it's about as easy to use as anything else. In fact, you don't really have to use the command line. Uh, you just have to remember the command and you can do it in the uh, run box, which I'll show you how to do um, once we have installed it. Um, but yeah, in fact, I remember watching an interesting YouTube video where someone demonstrated using Flash, using a little Flash, very simple Flash applet that they uh, coded together themselves. Uh, let's see, this is Linux, and it comes with the source code, so um, again, any of you coders can uh, can have a look what's behind it. Um, dependencies, installing without root permission, Windows binaries, here we go, and you just click on the installer there. Yeah, like I remember this uh, guy on a YouTube video, um, try and search for it if it's still about, basically he created this little Flash applet um, where you would um, sort of engage in this applet and what the applet would then do was turn on the camera, the webcam and start filming you um, without you knowing about it. He t sort of exploited a bit of a loophole. Uh, and it wasn't, it w you know, it wasn't a particularly, yeah, we want to run that. And it wasn't a particularly like obscure loophole. I am not a software developer, but I understood how he managed to do it within this, uh, with this applet. So yeah, there are a lot of security vulnerabilities in Adobe Flash, and let's face it, you know, tinfoil hats never really go out of style, do they? Um, but like I say, I mean, Adobe Flash is on its way out now anyway. I probably, and, and again, I'm not sort of advising, at least in this video, to actually uninstall Adobe Flash right now. I'll probably do a video where I talk about that in a little more uh, depth. Again, this is a pretty standard install process, um, but you don't really, it doesn't really ask you any difficult questions. And yeah, I mean, whether or not you actually want to uninstall your uh, default things, yeah. Yeah, the defaults work on this. Uh, whether or not you want to uninstall Adobe Flash is entirely up to you. I'll talk a little video, I'll talk a little bit in a video about some of the pros and cons, which I intend to record today, but I don't know when that will come out. Um, it'll ask you, do you want to edit the configuration file? I found the defaults to be fine, so you can uncheck that, or you can check it and actually let's check it and have a look. There is one, so as you can see, this is your pretty standard CFG file. You don't have to touch anything. For those of you that are unaware with CFG files, obviously you open them in Notepad. Anything with a little hashtag at the beginning of the line is um, an annotation for you. It doesn't have any bearing whatsoever on um, on uh, on that. But yeah, like so, you can uh, you can remove the hashtag there, and uh, and you can sort of bring in file caching. So at the moment, it's the default, which I assume is file caching at 5,000. Um, but, uh, but like I said, the defaults 
work well. So, uh, in fact, the defaults work so well, I can actually run VLC Twitch live streams on the highest setting um, without compromise. Now, I won't be doing that today, but um, what you can do is uh, right. So, let's start up on a Twitch live stream now. So, as you can see here, I've brought up a pretty standard Twitch TV page. This is from the Escapist magazine, Gym Tractivity. Uh, actually, the Escapist magazine is pretty damn good. I strongly advise you guys check it out. It's a video game website. I think they talk about movies and stuff as well. Okay, so the important piece of information you need from this page is simply the URL. If you can remember a URL or it's bookmarked in your favorites, you can use that as well. But it needs to be Twitch TV forward slash the person you want to watch. Then, you just uh, copy it to clipboard, and you need to then press the Windows key and R. And that'll bring up the run uh, little prompt at the bottom here. This is what we'll, what we'll be using in lieu of the terminal. So, you type in a live streamer, space, um, the URL, space, and there are four options for um, the Twitch TV live streams. Low, medium, high, best. I'm going to do medium just for the sake of this. But again, it works on just about, um, you know, it works really well. Uh, so don't be afraid to, uh, to crank it up. And it comes up with a little command prompt here, which will give you uh, information, found match in plugin for Twitch URL, available streams there. You can, oh, you can have the audio only as well. And the mobile version and so forth. So let's crack and open the VLC media player. And uh, let's see what we've got. And there we go. Anything else out of camera view with this woman sort of just naked going, oh, it's good. So, um, yeah. And uh, he's getting on with that live stream now. And as you can see, that live stream is running pretty smoothly on the medium settings, given that um, this is, of course, running inside of a virtual machine on a pretty shoddy internet connection. I say that's a damn good result, but like I say, I can run it on best outside of a virtual machine as well. So all you need for this, of course, is a, a VLC media player and the live streaming um, script that you download from the link in the description, which, of course, is open source as well. In fact, it's on the BSD license. Um, and I hope you guys have found this useful. Uh, you do not get the chat for uh, Twitch TV, but the way that uh, that I uh, work around that is I simply bring up the chat applet on my tablet, uh, which is what I do anyway when I'm watching a live stream. And uh, the Twitch TV app is, is pretty good. Uh, you can not only watch the uh, the streams, but now, uh, as of a couple of months ago, uh, with the new installment of the Twitch app, you can just use the chat, or you can use the chat and you can watch the stream. Um, so you've got a lot of options there. So I hope this has been somewhat useful to at least a few of you. That's about it from me today. Thank you very, very much for watching. And um, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.